Is fencing footwork really that good for martial arts? At this point, you know how curious I am, so I reached out to Mid-South Fencers Club. Coach Jen of Mid-South Fencers Club was very inviting to the idea of giving me a private lesson, taking a beginner's class, and then throwing me to the wolves. I wanted to get a good feel of what was so unique about fencing's footwork, distance management, and explosiveness. So after the classes and being fed to the wolves, I decided I was going to take it to sparring class. This is actually an orthopedic grip okay. uh, developed around World War I, World War II era so that soldiers yeah. who lost some digits could right. also participate in sword fighting. This is really cool. This immediately makes me feel at home because it feels like I'm just about to punch, but a little bit longer. It's called a pistol grip. And so you've got an angulated blade. You'll see that there is a line inside. That's a wire. Okay. Okay. And you'll see all the wires on the inside here and there's a socket. So you're going to plug in yeah. and that's going to come out of your back plugged into the electrical equipment. Oh, that's really cool. So there's no cheating. I can't cheat. Can't cheat. And then we've got a tip here. I'm going to work on the explosive stuff with the hand. Yeah. Shoulders loose. Very important. Okay. Hey, the, it's not going to come from here. Yeah, It's going right. to come from the hands and the fingers. The legs are where the explosiveness comes from. Right. Pointed directly towards, mm -hmm. and then back heel. Am I pretty perpendicular here? Okay. Like an L shape. Okay. okay. So you're nice and low. Okay. When you move, your front toe lifts up, and you just extending going forward and backwards. Okay. The attack starts with an extension, typically. Okay. But more, you want to think about the energy of this tip. When you are attacking, your hand goes, that toe comes up, the heel kicks out, boom and your power is right here. Okay, I like to give a percentage to like sure. where your weight is. The most active fencers, they have to be in balance on either foot, yeah. either front or back. Okay. You have front-legged attacks. Yeah, yeah. When you go defense, you have to be ready to spring forward. So having the weight centered and low is best. Okay, gotcha. Centered and low. Up, forwards, up, down. Yeah. Okay. You got one. Oh. Yeah, you can go back. Okay. You can also block. Like okay. This. Yeah. And when my blade comes up, mm -hmm. okay, like this, I want you to beat and then hit me. Okay. So, see out here, same. One. Good. <laughs> Epe, you can also run your home. Oh, okay. okay. You can cross your legs to get a little bit more explosiveness. You reach and then cross. Ooh, there you go. There you go. It's kind of crazy how macro of a movement like you have with your legs and explosion and how micro of a target you have. The guys come in, they're like, yeah, I got this. And yeah. they think harder, faster, stronger is okay. going to be the key. And typically you can have pretty good success mm -hmm. up to a certain point. At some point though, a thinking fencer is gonna figure out your patterns. Yeah. They're gonna read you and they're gonna exploit you on your strengths. Yeah, right, okay, that means- Honestly, that sounds. And now that I'm scared out of my wits, it's time to give it a go with the wolves I talked about earlier. Now, fencing is really cool because if you're good at it, you know you're good at it because you get to hear this little thing right here. Yeah, that wasn't for me, that was for her. She got that point. When you have a point system that is so absolute, everything that you do feels a little more dire. Any misstep, miscalculation can lead to you losing a point. Or more so getting stabbed, I guess. Oh, my blade broke. This is very dangerous. When the blade wanted to bend, yeah. it bent the wrong way, and, yeah. and it decided to break. But I still got the touch. <laughs> still got, she definitely got the touch. <laughs> now, full disclosure, we wired ourselves up for this one, and the it's backwards. That's not my point. Just keep that in mind. Now, the more that I play it, the more that I realize it's all about taking advantage of the small mistakes your opponent makes. Like right there, I was too close. Right here, my arm's just a little too high. Right here, I was flat-footed. Although I do like that move. 
we'll, we'll have to make a note of that one. So I told you when we were fencing, I'm trying to watch your fencing. Yeah. So I'll do like a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And maybe I'll go. Yeah. Because if I don't do that, then you know none of it's real. Sure, yeah. There's usually a moment where I can get your feet to completely stop. Yeah. So that's very dangerous for you. Yeah. Because if both feet are planted, right. and I see that, if I see that moment coming, yeah. I'm gonna You're go. You're just gonna go. And go, did they go. Over, and over, and over. Let's figure out how we're gonna spar. So aside from the long explosive footwork that they had, they had some other tactics that I really wanted to utilize in my sparring. The first one was simple, it was the parrying. The ability to move the sword out of the way and then thrust their own in sort of one fluid motion, boom, bang. Number two were these missteps. They wanted to move forwards. They take a very small step back to make it seem like they were moving backwards and then they'd explode forwards. And the third thing that I wanted to try was that flesh. Fletch, Fletch, Fletch. Pretty much the running technique that Coach Jen showed me and Lauren used on me repeatedly. I wanna see if that's something that I can do to close the distance because I'm gonna to have to stay pretty far away against these Muay Thai guys. Round one was definitely a feeler round. I could tell Josh knew something was up and he was letting me play. So I figured I'd try all the tactics that I just said I wanted to use. There's the lunge, not too shabby. Here's that misstep, and me getting touched up a decent amount. The only thing that I really wanted to work on next was the flesh. I'll take that. Now I'm definitely trying to use my lead hand only in this round, which makes it super difficult. One of the downsides of fencing when it comes to martial arts is that it leaves you open for a lot of lead leg attacks, especially having that foot pointed right at them. And Josh knows how to utilize that pretty well. Or I guess anti-utilize that. Now we'll come back to Josh in a second in a round where he shows a little less mercy, but first I wanted to try this on somebody else. Now, this is Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss loves to throw leg kicks, which immediately is going to be a big problem for me. Still trying to stay true to that one hand only, that L-shaped stance, which means I'm gonna have to have some distance and utilize time. and eat a lot of leg kicks. Now this last round is probably going to be like the truest test that we have available. He's definitely letting me go a little bit, but I'm trying to stay on the outside. He's trying to time my timing. Good head movement there by him. He's going super traditional Muay Thai. And my guess is he's trying to stop. Oh, I threw a kick by accident. Whoops. My guess is that he's trying to keep my lead leg from coming closer to him than he wants it. So he's starting now to even faint, pushing my lead leg away, which is gonna in turn keep me from coming forwards. That was ugly, that wasn't good. And now we're in trouble. We're in Josh's zone. I'm trying to think of what a fencer would do. I try and poke him a whole bunch with the end of my sword, that didn't work. I'm gonna, maybe I can run away. Also didn't work. I go for maybe an F5. Also no go. <sighs> 
So that hurt a little bit, yeah. I tried to go super strict with the fencing footwork. I tried to have my knee point towards my target and I got eaten alive for it. However, I was able to touch a pretty fair amount. I was able to get in and get what I wanted and then get out. Actually, that's not even true. Getting out was really difficult, which is what I think led me to get eaten up by so many leg kicks. And obviously using the backhand would have helped too, I suppose. But that flesh thing is something that worked out a ton. Like if I was like putting force behind it, that would have been awesome. That's probably gonna be a go-to move of mine for a while if I'm having a hard time getting in on somebody. Anyway guys, if you wanna see me try this with other styles or non-martial arts in general, I don't know, comment down below. Big shout out to Coach Jen, make sure you go follow her page. I'll link all that stuff down below. Until next time, peace! Bang.